Hello. I'm Caitlin Powell. And I'm Kate Butch. And this is Queers Gone By, the show where we talk about nostalgic film, TV, and snacks, and try to work out if that's what made us queer. And today. Today, I've answered the question. Our... Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> <laughs> it's our first episode of December, so we're going yes. all festive. We're kicking off the festive season yeah. with a bang. Um, mm-hmm. We asked our patrons <laughs> with to a whimper. Choose... <laughs> we were like, "Do you want to choose a choose a choose, choose a page choose, choose a Christmas thing for us to do?" And they voted. They submitted. They did mm-hmm. some democracy and. We are reviewing today A Very Very Glee Christmas. Yeah, I didn't know what the title was. (laughs) Uh, We go back to McKinley High. Um, If you're an avid listener, you'll remember that we did, uh, I think, episode number four overall. Yeah. It's been about 70 episodes since we last did a a Glee. Yeah. Uh, And people people say that they want want us to do some Glee all the time. Um, Mm -hmm. So this is hopefully going to satisfy everybody this i watched while desperately hungover and going backwards on a train that's the way to do it though (laughs) i I don't think the experience is any different from just watching it normally um yeah this is i will say because we've watched the one we did for episode four we've then watched a spin the gleal for patreon We've mm-hmm. also watched Rocky Horror Glee Show. Is that what it's called? Yep. That's such a shite yes. name. Anyway, <laughs> and this, so this is the full for me watching total, and it is definitely the worst. <laughs> I'm drinking just to deal with it. Um, it's um, should we go over what we missed? Here's what you missed on Glee. These recaps are like the most traumatizing. <laughs> They're like an actual drug trip. I'm watching it like, oh, is this Requiem for a Dream? Because it feels like it. <laughs> I tried to make notes and I was like, oh, <laughs> overwhelmed. I have so many questions. You summarise, because so, maybe you'll answer some of my questions while you're summarising. So Kurt moves schools mm-hmm. because he was getting bullied for being gay by someone who was secretly gay. Oh, really? Yeah. Who's the one who's secretly gay? Um, he's not in this episode. He's one of the football players oh. who like kisses him. Yeah. Um, mm. Emma got married to her dentist husband. Yeah. Who we met in the Rocky Horror Glee show. Yes, I was familiar. John Stamos. And Finn and Rachel broke up because Rachel kissed Puck because she thought that they weren't together anymore. I don't really understand this whole Rachel Finn thing. No. I won't lie to you. I don't really care. No. I want to know why there's a character called Puck. I was like, are they non-binary? Because if not, there's no excuse for that name. Well, his name's Noah Puckerman. Oh. It's a heterosexual it. nickname. Oh, that's annoying. Because Puck is a real cute, like... You know when people choose their own names and they're always the okay, fucking I'm best. I'm a fae. Fuck Yes. Off. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Bitch, you ain't got wigs. You're not a fairy. <laughs> I love Puck. We did Puck at um, school. At Puck? We did Midsummer Night's Dream at school, right? And we had a girl mm. Puck and we were all like, oh, how very modern. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question about this recap. Okay. So Brittany, who is gay, is dating Artie, who is shockingly straight. Um, Brittany is bi. Okay. Santana's gay. Even though she had a thing with that guy. Oh, is Santana... I think Santana's like a later life gay. Okay. I mean, not so much later. She's like 16. What um, is the secret thing that happens between her and the guy with the thousand lo- thousand yards stare? With the what? The thousand yards stare. You know the blank, exp- the fucking like uh, face. What's his name? They sing with the trees. Sam. No, Mike. no, Rachel's person. Finn. Finn. There we go. Oh, yeah. He looks so <laughs> blank all the time. He's like ooh. <laughs> You've absolutely roasted all of the dead people on this show. Um, <laughs> all of them? How many are there? Three. Oh. Well, I never roast Santana. She's great. Okay, good. That's fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Finn and Rachel have broken up for reasons that I don't really care about because they're the worst characters on the whole show. But do, do, do you not know what happened with Santana and what's his name? Finn. Oh, Santana and Finn. Did they get together when they sang Like a Virgin? Oh, in the Madonna God. episode, oh, Santana no. and Finn were going together because San- Finn was losing his virginity to Santana and Rachel was losing her virginity to Jonathan Groff. 
Who's that? He's been on the Broadway. Oh, okay. I also saw him in real life in the National Theatre. Lovely oh, time. Lovely. Yeah, so that's that's what you missed on Glee. Uh, <laughs> and None we of kick it, it off. Relevant. None of it relevant. Uh, this episode very much in the vein of Christmas specials. You could skip this one, and the plot is the same. Yeah. Essentially. Is Ryan Murphy gay? Yes. Oh God, his <sighs> the prom films coming out soon. The Why James fucking not? Corden. Why does he uh, have better taste? I don't know. He's like he's a very white gay. I was right never to trust the taste of a gleek at school. <laughs> it's all becoming clear. Um, mm. So Will, who is a war criminal, um, is spending Christmas alone. Good. Yeah. It's what you deserve. And he's approached by my nemesis, Emma. <laughs> Who's doing the classic normal behaviour of questioning the guy you used to have a thing with about whether they feel weird about you getting engaged. Classic normal thing to do. <laughs> a human reaction to a complex situation. Do your ever impression, go on. Uh, oh yeah. I've so got to do for Christmas. How about spending Christmas? <laughs> so what are you doing for Christmas this year? <laughs> <laughs> I hate her so much. She's the worst. Her voice is so frustrating. So what are you going to do for Christmas? It's so... <laughs> I hate her. A normal question. And they question. pick up a secret Santa. Oh, yes. Yeah. Um, and we'll get Sue. And he's like, okay, I've got to get her a fucking present. Yeah. And at first, by the way, in this scene, I was like, oh my God, is there a trans teacher? That's so interesting. But don't worry, Ryan Murphy is there with a fucking spade to slather that on the whole episode. <laughs> and I'm not like, yeah, like, that's great in theory, but the way it's done is... The way a lot of sensitive topics are approached, yeah. specifically in this episode. Um, I have some questions. I have some thoughts. Uh, but yes, uh, Coach Beast, who is bef- yeah. pre his transition, who seems lovely. He's he's a, a sweetheart. Yeah, love him. lovely. Um, and then we, we, Brittany um, apparently still believes in Santa. That's what we learn. That's the crux of the episode. Yeah, because Brittany's the dumb one, mm-hmm. and she still believes in Santa. I and hate then, this um this traditional Christmas time uh, plot point of someone believes in Santa. I'm just like, let them have fun. Yeah. Also, actually, no, we'll get to it. I'll, I'll have a go later. <laughs> Something else that pisses <laughs> um, me off about this. And then with the most heavy-handed fucking symbolism, the Glee Club sings the Island of Misfit Toys. Oh God! Around yeah. a Christmas tree, like we're all misfits. I'm a bike with square wheels. I'm like, no, you are very pretty looking 30 year olds pretending Mm. to be average looking teenagers. Yeah. You're not misfits. You sing nice. Just one of you's gay. We have to specify at one point, they literally say, we're all misfits. Three of you are cheerleaders. And two of those three are blonde. (laughs) Have some fucking introspection, please. Yeah. Although, as per usual, there are about ten people in this scene who I did not recognise, so <laughs> maybe they're weird. Also, I've never seen anything so obviously dubbed. Oh, yeah, they are. They're, it's, yeah. they're not lip-syncing for their life. Yeah. There's so they are lip-syncing, but their lives are not In this sync. episode, there's so many opportunities to do some acting, and every time they fumble the ball. It's so upsetting. I was thinking, this is a weird... Episode because it's their first Christmas special, and yet they are already scraping the bottom of the barrel for most of their Christmas songs. Like if you if you go to someone on the street, Billy on the street, like name a Christmas song. No one's mm. gonna go the Island of Misfit Toys or the bit where they do the Farfu Forest in the Grinch. Yeah, there's That's... two songs that are very like popular though. There's a couple of bangers. I won't. I lie. will say I skipped every song. <laughs> wow, wow. <laughs> I just hate the way they sing. Like, I think Glee is responsible. Do you know what I mean when I say it? everyone seems to think the most basic singing is attractive now? Like, no one ever has any personality in their fucking voice. A little bit of crunch. It's all very, like... <laughs> Do you know what I, I mean? Will, I will give Glee this, though. It is the reason that I know most of the songs that I know now. 
I do um, like um, musical bingo gigs where they play like a playlist on shuffle and you like cross off the song when you hear it. And the, most of the songs, I'm like, okay, I know all the words to this because I have the Glee albums. Right. Which should be embarrassing, but yeah. I'm going to take it. I'm, we're all misfits. Oof, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Will comes in and is like, what's going on here? We're going to have some little, we're going we're, we're gonna to carol, do some caroling for homeless children. Yeah, he sees them having fun together without him and he's like, not on my watch. <laughs> he's like, what? what the fuck do you think? You're singing a song so in this room. I'm, I'm not in the room and you're singing a fucking song. Uh, excuse me later. <laughs> that's, that will not happen. <laughs> no, um, that's not happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they go around caroling in the classrooms because they're so popular at school. They're like, we're going to go around and sing in the classrooms. Yeah. And to be fair, one of the bangers of the episode. Really? What was it? We need a little Christmas. Ha um, out the holly. It's from the musical Mame. No, no. blank stairs all around. <laughs> That's okay. Listen to Angela Lansbury singing it. She's having a lovely time doing it. Oh, I'm sure she is. Yeah. That sounds lovely. Mame. She won a Tony for that. Mame. Mame. M A M E. It's about. It's, oh, you would okay. fucking love Mame, Caitlin. It's about. <laughs> oh no. There's this like this little orphan boy, and they're like. Okay, we're going to take you to your aunt's house. She's your last relative. Um, so you're going to have such a bland existence with this old aunt of yours, this old main aunt. I love aunt. orphans. Where is they this going? Get, they get to the house of the aunt, your auntie oh. Mame. She is the campest old slag. <laughs> ah. She's like, she's in a jumpsuit. She's like, bevved out of fucking mind. She's like, <laughs> I'm your auntie Mame. And then she like I takes mean, them on a magical, whimsical journey of excess. <laughs> Listeners, I think we're your auntie Mame. <laughs> <laughs> Bevved out our mind in a jumpsuit. Take you on a I'm whimsical not journey. Jumpsuit, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, metaphorically in jumpsuits. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're not imagining this in a jumpsuit, you're doing it wrong. Christmas, right this very minute. Candles in the window. Carol's at the spinach. Oh, Carol's at the spinach. Carol, come in, Carol. The spinach. Spinach. I don't know what a spinach is. Is it oh. a doorway? Say it's Carol Singers. Oh, it's Carol. Carol Singers. She's here. Um. Welcome anyway, to the Carol students Singers. hate it, and the teacher throws a shoe at Rachel Berry. I mean, you fucking would, wouldn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I just I'm even before person. you knew she was a racist. I think we talked about this last time we reviewed Glee. My person who just enjoys watching people do something they excel at even if it's not my jam like if i was in that school i'd just be watching them like oh this is nice i mean i just like watching people excel at things i mean not excel bold (laughs) yeah i will say the pop pop guy from community is there he did the rounds i don't know who that is but have you seen community i'm happy for you no i've never seen community (gasps) What? I'm far too busy. I've got knitting to do. <laughs> and every musical under the sun to watch. Yes, and I've also just started watching old episodes of Coronation Street. Oh my god. I've never seen it before. Coronation Street? I'm a bit obsessed. Yeah. I've never seen All I know is... I've only seen like, the rest of Gail. Gail Platt, that's all I know. And Audrey Roberts. Yeah. Hmm? Mm-hmm. What does that make me? Hmm? Stupid, silly old woman. Silly old woman. Hmm? Yeah. That does that, does it? Uh. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> Yeah. Then um, they're decorating yet another tree. Oh. A, yeah. a different tree. Where did the first tree, tree go? Did they give it to the homeless children? Why do the homeless children want a tree? Get them some shoes. What? <laughs> Get them some shoes. They're oh, homeless. I see. And they're like, yes. we've got some blenders for you. No, we don't want that. <laughs> we've not got nowhere to plug it in. <laughs> Make um, a puree. Uh, and the Brittany wish, they're all wishing for what they want for Christmas. Brittany's like, all I want for Christmas is for no more bullying for the Glee Club. Yeah. And so everyone gathers round to very suspiciously and loudly talk about Brittany. 
They talk about her so loudly when she's like a meter away. They're like, this dumb cunt thinks about Santa. <laughs> and here's the thing, like I've seen a few episodes now. I never thought Brittany was like incapable of like like sensing the world around her and knowing what's going on and spatial awareness. She just seems like a nice gal. And they're making her out to be a right dipshit, aren't they? They are, they are. Yeah. Um, they go to the mall to see Santa. This is the bit that pissed me off. I can believe that she... How old are they supposed to be? Like 15, 16? 15, 16, yeah. Yeah. I can <laughs> believe that someone might still believe it's in Santa at that age. I think she's an only child. I think she's probably quite sheltered. Yeah, I can believe that. I can believe it. It stretches my imagination. I do not believe that she is unfamiliar with the concept as people, of people dressing up as Santa. Especially when it's people you know. I'm yeah. like, that's, that's your cheerleading coach in green yeah. face paint. And you, you're chatting to her. She's got the same voice. Yeah. And yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. But anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, I know what you mean. It's bizarre. I um, um, but she goes and she's like, Santa, what I wish for. Oh, she no. goes, oh, you see my boyfriend over there. And then I, in like a That's So Raven, zoom in on my eye. I was like... Oh no, is this fucking episode? I hadn't I seen like, it before and I was like, oh no, oh please. I'd, re- I'd repressed this in the deepest recesses of my mind, but she's like, all I want for Christmas is for my boyfriend Artie to be able to walk. My head went into my hands. <laughs> I think my, like, my neck kind of congealed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not the word, but you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. And then Artie's like, fuck. Yeah. And then Rachel and Finn are on the stage of the auditorium. Oh, yeah. She sings a boring song. I don't know. Oh, she's like, I'm going to give you a gift. It's me singing a song. Um, a very you move. <laughs> it's a very move. <laughs> and he's like, um, I don't want you to sing me a song. And she's like, well, I'm here now. So and yet I anyway. persist. <laughs> show Rachel we don't want you to sing the song and yet here I am (laughs) and she sings uh, Merry Christmas Darling which again not one of the top Christmas songs what is it inform me I don't know it either I don't think it's from a musical oh wow okay Hmm. I only know it's from from a musical it seemed like the sort of c-list song of the musical do you know what I mean I assumed it was from a musical yeah yeah like the one where you're like Oh, uh, okay, cool. <laughs> Woman's yeah. looking sad, or or older man's looking sad. Was it you who showed me that? The the oh, the old man singing a song in a musical. Yeah, had yeah. that vibe. Yeah, it's like sentimental man or Mr. Cellophane. Yes, we love it. Yes. Um, so she sings this song by herself, and she does this thing. I know this is an audio podcast, but if you're a fan of Glee, you'll know what I mean. When she closes, she screws up her eyes really tight, and then kind of like blares it out. She thinks she's a Dina Menzel. <laughs> Adele She's her daughter. <laughs> oh, I keep forgetting that. I mean, it's good yeah. casting because she looks like her. I, yes, that is very true. Yeah. Um. And then we go to Dalton Academy, I think it's called, which is where Kurt has transferred to. This is where I continued to cringe up inside myself. Oh, I thought this bit was really cute. Um. I can't tell if I find. Uh, what's his name? Is it Darren Chris? Darren Chris? No, Chris Colfer. Wait, okay. were they both in the scene? Yes, Chris Colfer's Kurt, yeah. Darren Chris is Blake. Yes, I can't tell if I find Chris Colfer's voice charming or incensing. Oh, very I, grating. It is yeah. very grating. I just, sometimes I'm like, oh, this is nice. And then I listen for five more seconds. And I'm like, nah, you could shut up though, <laughs> couldn't you? You could stop. <laughs> But I think Darren Chris is very charming. I like early Kurt and Blaine because they're really cute. Where are we in, in the timeline of that? They, they oh, haven't well, dated just... yet. No, 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 no. He's just moved to the school. The school, yeah, yeah. I think he knew Blaine slightly beforehand. Like, they'd met a couple of times. Right. And then he was like, they're... oh, you can be out and gay in this school and no one's bullying you. Which, Actually, like... Maybe it's not, I was it's not like... being out and gay. Maybe it's just being insufferably annoying. <laughs> also, like... I think, well, maybe it is a stereotype that in private schools, the guys all like, 
embrace Fact. yeah that for a few years and then become massively homophobic for the rest of their lives my dad went to boarding school so did my dad <gasps> maybe they <laughs> fucked each other no. uh- <laughs> maybe we're sisters <laughs> Sisters, sisters. Um, Blaine and Kurt sing Baby It's Cold Outside. Yeah. Um, which, despite <laughs> the subtext of the song, is it's quite a cute scene, I think. Yeah, the song really pisses me off, but... Yeah. It's not a good song, by mm. any stretch. Um, and then Blaine fucks off, and who should turn up in the school? Will. It's Will Schuster. He just walks in. Breaks into the school. (laughs) He's like, so Kurt, guess what? We've picked out our secret Santas. I've got Sue and I'm not sure what to buy her. So I'm thinking, who is good at shopping that I know? Oh, it's the homosexual. I'm like, find adult friends, Will. (laughs) This is the most... You broke into a school. You are breaking so many, like, what they call, like, children protection rules or whatever to do this. You're just wandering in. To harass this guy about presents for someone he probably doesn't know? Doesn't like, certainly. But has he interacted with Sue? Oh yeah, probably. Oh, because she Sue, hates cause... the Glee Club. Yeah. Okay, as we're on this topic, sorry I keep railroading this, but um, she hates the Glee Club. Mm-hmm. And she hates everyone in it. Except mm-hmm. half of those people are cheerleaders. Yeah, I don't understand the logic. Oh, okay. I thought you'd tell me there was logic. I (laughs) wish I could help you. Um, (laughs) um, uh, And then Will buys her something. I can't remember what it was. Don't care. And they're walking in to give their presents. And um, Will's like, oh, I got this for Sue. And Emma's like, oh, I also got Sue. And Coach Beast is like, I got Sue too. Turns out everyone got Sue. Yeah. Because in a, a bit of queer trickery... She's swapped the barrels round and everyone's picked her name out, which is absolutely something I would do. Uh, I was about to say, is it queer trickery or is she just awful? Why not both? <laughs> Get you someone who can do both. I certainly can. They're right here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it me. Um, I, I have a question. Number one, what is her motive? And two, how has she not been fired? <laughs> She's got, oh, because quite early on in the series, she roofies the principal. What? And, like, doesn't, like, have actual sex with him, but takes compromising what? pictures. What? Of so the she's... two of them together. So she's committed a sex crime? Basically. This show. Is it queer trickery or is it a sex crime? <laughs> Christ. Why not both? <laughs> Christ. Don't do both. Don't... Listeners. Well... We don't endorse that. We endorse queer trickery. We don't endorse... We do, oh, absolutely queer yeah. trickery, but if it, if it verges on to sex crimes, <laughs> don't be doing none, that, lads. None of that, thank you. Um, glad we cleared that up. <laughs> um, I... Um, oh, the more I learn about this show, the more I am astonished that Ryan Murphy has a career. He's got a very lucrative career for someone who is not that great at his job no he just takes popular things and Mm. makes them gaudy and accessible tag yourself (laughs) (laughs) i'm gaudy Uh, but is it accessible based on this episode oh oh i want my boyfriend to walk Uh, (laughs) uh, Oh, Emma, has, Emma works out the queer trickery and Sue says one of the best lines, which I did write down. She says, <laughs> oh, you're like a regular Agatha Christie, except even more sexless. I didn't notice that line. That's great. <laughs> that is good. Um, and then... The, wait. She grabs a hat off Lauren's Ices, who is now in the Glee Club. Lauren's Ices? What? She's called Lauren's Ices. She's okay. one of the new Glee Club members. I see. She's a bad gal. Okay. And uh, she's wearing a Christmas hat, and Sue's like, I'm having that. Oh, yeah, her. 
the person who's not like a size 10, so they keep making her do eating jokes. Yep, that one. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> fucking um, hated it. It was so annoying. And Will takes the presents back. He's like, we're going to donate these to the homeless children, this blender that I bought for you, and yeah. this like velour track suit or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. And he says, Sue, you're a Grinch. And, Sue's and like, she's mm-hmm. like, aha! <laughs> a chance to do a musical mom the number, moi! <laughs> <laughs> um, meanwhile, the boys of the Glee Club ask mm-hmm. Coach Beast to pretend to be Santa so yes. that he can say, sorry, Brittany, I can't do it for you. Yeah. Um, and if I... Like, I would probably have been like, no <laughs> that's not you my not job any other adults yeah <laughs> at one point they're like you have the right figure for it or something i'm like <laughs> don't be fucking rude <laughs> but i think he's feeling himself as santa eventually yeah. there's like a little trans spark going on there yeah yeah i'm gonna sound really dumb are we going with he? Because pre-transition. Yeah, he's a trans man. Um, and he's played by a woman. The actress isn't trans, which I mean opens up another can of worms. Wait, I but thought the, the they... character was a trans. The character was a trans woman because they talk about wanting to be the prettiest girl. Am I going? No, the character's a trans. The character's a trans man. I've been referring to him as he because he's a man. Yeah. Um, but at this point, they will refer to him as she. Oh. I got the narrative really confused then. Because he, he comes in and they're like, oh, this is a very butch woman. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got really confused later on when... Because they do this really laboured metaphor later about, like, Santa and, and a transition. Being a pretty girl. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I mean, I, the, I think the trans storyline was very much like a last minute kind of thing. It's towards the very end of the series. Yeah. And so I think they were kind of, in this episode, it was like, oh, I'm a butch woman. I'm embracing my butchness. Oh. But, okay. I mean, obviously people in real life can realise that they're trans a lot later on in their lives. But in the world of scripted television and... I don't want to sound cynical that Ryan Murphy might not be very good at storylines. <laughs> but I'm not, not saying that. And um, we don't want to accuse him of dealing with storylines in a, in a not particularly sensitive way. That, oh. No. Don't want to accuse <laughs> him of that at all. Okay, sorry, I, I think, completely I, my mistake. I, I feel I like the trans storyline, because um, Alex Newell plays a trans woman later on. And they're non-binary. I don't know about Alex Newell personally. But anyway. Oh, okay. Who knows? Um, I haven't got on the Wikipedia for a while. Um, I think the main reason that they make Coach Beast trans is that they can get Alex Newell to sing I Know Where I've Been from Hairspray. <gasps> okay, like but a, I, I love... Embrace I love, your transness. Okay, I love that. I hate the context, as in it feels <laughs> very like... Sh- like it, God, it's very... Sh- everything laughing. in this is shoehorned. Like, Ryan Murphy was like patting himself on the back for everything, wasn't he? Are you in? Are you in Clark's Ryan? Because there's shoehorns everywhere. <laughs> a tee hee hee. Anyway, Sue's caked green makeup on her face. Becky's mm-hmm. got a horn, uh, like a, a reindeer antler. Yes. She's not got. <laughs> she's got a reindeer antler. Um, she's being Max, and Sue is being the Grinch. Yeah. And who should sing Sue's song, You're a Mean One, Sue the Grinch, in a queer turn of events? Do you know who's singing this song? Why would I know that? You might have recognised the voice. I don't know. It's Katie Lang. <gasps> <laughs> For no reason. She's not visible. It's just Stop her voice going, song. You're a Mean what? One. <laughs> Sue the Grinch. <laughs> How did this show have such sway over people that they could just book Katie Lang? <laughs> it's, 
it's I hate nonsense. this show. Do you reckon so... Ryan Murphy just has like loads of shit on everyone? Oh, and funny. he's like, if you don't come on my show and sing about Jane Lynch, be... Jane Grinch, Jane Grinch, fabulous. That's it. We're done. Shut it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, um, I reckon it's... every year Ryan Murphy hosts a massive booze up at his and just sits in the corner with a notebook. <laughs> And then it's Patching like, hi, Katie Lang. I saw you snorting coke. <laughs> I saw you kissing Santa Claus. If Santa Claus <laughs> is not your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Katie Lang, um, you know what you did? You've got to sing a song from the Grinch movie <laughs> with Sue replacing the word Grinch. <laughs> um... Sue smashes up everything, um, cuts down the trees, takes How all the presents. does she have a job? Because <laughs> she's got blackmail on people. This is true. Yeah. Um, and then Brittany turns up. She's got the plaits in like a little pretzely <gasps> shape. Um, oh, of course she does. Yes, that's very she's, cute. She's the Cindy Lou Who of the story. And she's like, yeah. Santa, what's going on? I'm Where like, are you, Christmas? She's green. Like, Brittany, she's green. It's, it, not only is she green, it's also someone that you have known for several years. She it's struggles with it's like the Clark Kent, like put on a put on glasses, yeah, and taking off glasses. <laughs> oh. Idiots, absolute idiots. Yeah. Um, the next day, mm-hmm. Finn gives some like empowering speech being like we're gonna get it doesn't matter if we don't have the presence we're gonna give the spirit of togetherness to these homeless children yeah um, and it's a lot like when they're like you can do this gig for exposure <sighs> yeah right. so they go shopping for trees oh yes rachel and finn have they broken up at this point they i think they're kind of like very much on the rocks i see what i would have um, done is say hey here are my boundaries. <laughs> no, basic communication. But no, no one is communicating in this show. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of heterosexual nonsense going on. They yeah. sing Last Christmas at some trees. I hated this. Had to fast forward. Couldn't bear it. What really annoyed me was when the start of the song came on, Rachel goes, oh my God, it's my favourite. It's Wham. <laughs> I don't like hearing an American say Wham. Like, you leave George Michael <laughs> out of your mouth. <laughs> Not deserved to be mentioned in Glee. Wham. No, you don't deserve <laughs> him. <laughs> um, but at the end of the song, Rachel's like, let's get back together, kissy kiss. And Finn's like, I don't think so. Sweet cheeks. We are officially broken up. Tatty bye. Yeah. So we are a bit lost. Sad. To mm. know from me. <laughs> um, back at school, uh, the boys are putting their watches in a bag and the girls are ready to <laughs> literally cut off their hair. The fontine of it all. Yeah. <laughs> to bald themselves, silly. <laughs> like, we're going to sell our hair for homeless children. I'm like, just. Yeah. Enter Will Schuster. And he says a line. Mm. Have any of you read Gift of the Magi? Yeah. Magi. <laughs> Magi. Magi. I hate this piece of piece of dialogue. It's a, a bit between him and Quinfabray. I wrote that? it down. She's the blonde cheerleader who has had a baby by this point. She was going <gasps> out with Finn at the start. Every detail is astonishing. <laughs> She's going out with Finn, then cheated on him with Puck, which is why Finn's a bit sore when everyone, anyone cheats on him with Puck. Um, um, and now and she's got with pregnant Puck. with Puck's baby, had the baby, gave it to Adina Menzel. No, now she's with Sam, who's the blonde boy with the big mouth. Yes. Hang on. Gave it to Adina Menzel. So the baby is Rachel's adopted sister. What? I thought Adina Menzel is Rachel's mum. Yes. Oh, yeah, so they're kind of maybe related. Yes, a bit related. That's really weird. Why are you desensitised to all of this? I, I think I went through it too young. I okay. Just... <laughs> but this line of it's dialogue... It's like going to religious uh, school. It just 
we'll drop the ducks <laughs> back. Over there. Yeah. Um, we, this is the, like, I, I hate how this is scripted. Will goes, have you actually read Gift of the Magi? Oh. And Quinn for Bray goes, you don't have to read it. Everybody knows what it's about. And Will goes, well, if you actually read it, you'd know what it's about. She's just said she knows what it's about. <sighs> yeah. And then because you're missing a says, word. Isn't it about X and Y? And he's like, basically. Okay, so they do know what it's about. So you can end this conversation now and fuck off. So you don't have to read it, clearly. Yeah. <laughs> Just need to know some... I don't know what the gift of the Magi is. Is it gold, frankincense and myrrh? Well, it's the Magi. Yes. <laughs> I thought it was the Magi. It is the Magi. But I didn't, I didn't want to commit to anything until you'd said it. Until I went off on one. <laughs> Never. <laughs> That's not a good idea. I'm often very wrong. <laughs> That's a lie. I'm always correct. <laughs> on this podcast? Being wrong? Oh. I've never seen it happen. Well. I would um, love to see it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might very quickly Google what Gift of the Magi is. Um, right. And I'm seeing you drink some wine and I'm feeling a little bit left out. So I might go and get myself some wine. It's actually mango very, very... gin. Because I hate myself. Mango gin? I'm going to go it's try and find some mango gin. I'm going to find the weirdest alcohol I can find in my parents' liquor cabinet. Do it. And we shall see you, listeners, after this very short break. Right, so I've Googled Gift of the Magi, and I've realised that it's all about the spirit of giving. And if you'd like to give two silly queers a happy Christmas, please consider joining our Patreon. You'll be supporting our independent podcast and you'll get some great rewards in the process. Rewards like early access, bonus content, postcard badges. Mm. Rewards like early access, bonus content, postcards, badges, and even snacks. We'd also like to give a shout out to our patrons on the Tracy tier Cole Scahill, Asley Amaro, Laura Kenny, Ed Colley, Alex's Simp, and nothing is certain except Beth and Taxes. So if you'd like to become a patron and get access to these exclusive rewards, put down your gold, frankincense, and mirth. (laughs) 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 And visit patreon.com forward slash queers. That's patreon.com forward slash Q-U-E-E-R-S. And we're back. We're back. I've got into my parents' alcohol cabinet and I found ginger wine, which is the strangest thing I could think of. Um, I couldn't find a best before date because it had rubbed off and <laughs> when I opened it, some kind of like flakes came out of it. It's wine. It's meant it's to a, it's age. Mm. I don't I'm know to sit now. That is absolutely vile. <laughs> that... what? Okay. Actually, no, it's grown on me. It's grown on me. It tastes like... <laughs> You're the kombucha like, girl right cal- now. You're Brittany Broski. Oh, 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 no. Who, by the way, I don't know if anyone gives a shit about Brittany Broski, but she's, along with her other content on YouTube, she started doing, like, art history videos where she just chats for, like, ten minutes about an artwork she's really passionate about, and it's the most wholesome time, and she talks so (laughs) calmly, and I just like hearing people being enthusiastic. Surprisingly. (laughs) Well, maybe, um, maybe I'll check it out. Thank you for that. Do it's lovely. Anyway, back to this anyway, shit. <laughs> in in the dead of night. Yes. Um, Brittany goes downstairs and Santa Beast is there. Yes. And he's like, "I'm really sorry, lads, but I I can't help can't help your boyfriend. Um, here's a story about um a girl who was a bit of an ugly duckling. Yeah. But all she needed was patience." Oh, now I see the narrative. Yes, okay. Yeah. It's very, it's set, like, her eyes are wide, just looking at um, Brittany, like, you sure you don't recognise me? Not one bit. <laughs> okay, I'm going to tell you a very personal story about me, and let's see if you get it. <laughs> Be like if you were staring at me, like, once a, a small homosexual who grew up in Derbyshire, and I'm like, I, do, I have no idea, love, sorry. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> she, she's, looking, she's looking at him like, I don't know who this man is. 
<laughs> Sorry to this man. <laughs> Sorry to this man. He can be walking down the street and I wouldn't know a thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But yeah, Brittany's like, I've lost my Christmas spirit and Christmas is ruined oh, so for me. Bad. She just wants to like Christmas. I feel so sorry for her in this show. I I kind of do, but I kind of don't. I think because I, I just don't believe she's as stupid as they're making her sound. Like, it's so ridiculous that I'm like, I'm ignoring how stupid it is. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, she mm-hmm. just wants to like Christmas and everyone's ruining it. <laughs> I mean, she did wish that anyway. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, she was so Sue's, problematic. Anyway. Sue's walking down the halls of the school and she hears coming out of the staff room um, Far foo, forest, amu, doris, this is nonsense songs. I was like, is this Latin? And I was like, I think it's just gobbledygook. <laughs> it's just Dr. Zeus being a prick. <laughs> Oh, is that where it's from? It's, the, it's another Grinch one. I see. I recognise the tune. Okay. Mm. Mm. Um, I wouldn't have known it if Christine Baranski hadn't been there. <laughs> We're blank completely. <laughs> um, and Sue's like, oh, this is actually really nice. I've had a change of heart. I was like, you changed your tune quickly. <laughs> and um, they're leaving and Rachel's like, Mr. Shoe, I know that you're alone on Christmas. So would you like to come round to mine? Draw this boundaries was... with your yeah. students. It's so unsettling. Fucking hell. Yeah. <sighs> they go to the choir room. And yes. who's there? On little crutches and little robot legs. It's Artie. It's Artie. And they're and... like, we don't know where these came from. These were just there. Oh, magical. And it pans to Coach Beast and he smiles. Yeah. And he got them them. I would be like, and... how much did those cost? <laughs> How much money do you have stored away for little, like, potentially life-saving trinkets for people? (laughs) (laughs) But he's like, oh, I can only use them, like, once a year. (laughs) That's when the magic works, slash, I have access to my bank account. (laughs) This could have been a really nice discussion on how people who have disabilities don't need to be fixed. Right. Quotation marks, cured. Yeah. Air quotes. Um, and yet. And yet. <sighs> I'm a gin down. That's where I am. <laughs> I mean, um, they don't really handle Artie's disability very well throughout because there's... Yeah. Because obviously um, the guy that plays him isn't disabled. Which I'm like, surely you could have hired an actual mm. disabled actor. Surely, but how else then would they manage to do a dream sequence where he gets up in a shopping mall and dances around to safety dance? Oh, they shape of water it, do they? S S S S A A. Yeah, and he's like, ah, yeah, I'm get. You can dance if you want to. And he's like in the fountain, like I'm walking, and then like snap back to him, sit down in his chair. Thanks, I hate it. Awful. Right. Glee, so then... handling something sensitively. I'd never have thought it. <laughs> so then, uh, Will is heading home mm-hmm. and he's spending Christmas alone. He oh. walks in uh, to his house and he isn't immediately like, what the fuck? Because all the lights are on. <laughs> he hears a little rustling and he's like, what's going on here? Let me investigate. Uh, <laughs> and then he gets killed by a home invader. The end. <laughs> no, it's just Sue. It's just As sick. if that's better. As if that's better. Your colleague invading your home. She's like, I've had a key for ages. I got one cut years ago. <laughs> I, I fluctuate between being absolutely appalled at Sue's behaviour and also being like, yes, this is reasonable. Do more of this. <laughs> and in this occasion, it is reasonable. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who amongst us hasn't broken into our colleague's house in order to fix a minor dispute? It's not breaking in if you've got a key. That's true. It's legal. It's Legally not legal. obtaining a key. <laughs> Maybe. Um, and who else is there but the whole fucking Glee Club? Yeah, they're hiding in a cupboard or something. <laughs> it's so weird. <laughs> yeah. And um, Will's like, oh, but Sue, why, why are you doing this? I, th- I thought you hated the holidays. And Sue goes, no, 
I just hate you. Same. Finn. <laughs> I mean, fair. Will she's... Yeah. Oh, I mean, I think now's a good time to talk about the fact that Matthew Morrison is going to be playing the Grinch. Who's Matthew Morrison? He plays Will Schuster. Oh, of course he does. That's a very witness protection program name. <laughs> Incredibly straight name. Have you Ugh. seen a picture of him as the Grinch? It is obscene. I shan't be looking. I pretend I do not see it, even if you send me a I picture. think we should watch Matthew Morrison's version of the Grinch when it comes out. <laughs> I think you should shut your mouth. <laughs> I think we should watch it. <laughs> I would like to when's see it, the trailer. When's it coming out? I think it's, they're doing like a live TV spectacular or something like they often do. Ugh. What, like on stage? It, maybe like a set. Like, you know, that like The Wiz Live. Oh, that's doubly on. humiliating. I might be able to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> There's something about being on stage that is very cringy. <laughs> I say that as a stand up. <laughs> Certainly the way you do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have like. Uh, film it's mental but you're like yeah fair enough yeah they make good choices when you watch it live you're like oh god that's a person in there behind all that makeup but it's kind of like you know because we've been doing online gigs and stuff it's like you are like like a zoom gig basically doing the whiz mm-hmm. live because you're doing a show for an audience that you know is there in the moment but you cannot mm-hmm. get a response from which is very, like, jarring and upsetting. Yeah, although I found... I did a recent Zoom gig, and people were allowed to have their um, mics on, but, like, if uh... people had them turned down too loud or were, like, chatting, they the person controlling could turn them off. I found that lovely. I don't know why. I always found it, like, not easier, but it was just so, like, casual. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I we like don't that. tend to have... Um, mics on because i could do bingos and stuff people have to be like listening properly um also people are getting hammered right during bingo oh yeah normally so they're like did everybody get that number i have no idea of knowing (laughs) if anybody heard all the numbers but like we're just gonna keep going on i can see them but i'm kind of like standing far away and i have terrible eyesight famously right so i'm like has anyone called bingo yet has anyone said it like squinting into my bloody laptop wow it's tricky but like booked and blessed i'm not gonna complain Imagine if we took the time right now to complain about... <laughs> I wish I were doing fewer gigs in this economy. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the end of Very Glee yeah. Christmas. What did yeah. you reckon? I honestly hated every second. <laughs> I, that's, I that's feel all I you. Uh, I think what's, what made it sadder for me is that one of the options for the Patreon review was Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, which is one of my favourite things in the world. And it's got camp hippos doing ballet on the ice. You know what made me sad is uh, next episode of Glee is called the Sue Sylvester Shuffle. <laughs> it was right there and we couldn't watch it. <laughs> um, but if... If you listeners feel inclined that you're disappointed by a very glee Christmas um, and you'd like us to review either the Sue Sylvester Shuffle or <laughs> Mickey's Twice Upon a Christmas, <laughs> do get yourselves over to the Patreon um, mm. and you can submit what a- anything that you want us to review. Yeah. We're very free and easy. We'll take yes. anything. Um, I mean, to so be put to a vote is very democratic, but yes. But you've got the opportunity. You're basically like an executive producer. Yeah. Yeah, that's because no one else is. I mean, the Patreons are. No one is actually producing this podcast. It's just us being like, oh, yeah, let's put it on the internet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a very professional. Uh, also, on the Patreon, you can hear behind the scenes little excerpts of our trials and tribulations, our exploits, as it were. Um, yes. And because it's Christmas, the spirit of giving, dig deep into your pockets, give some homeless children a blender, <laughs> and visit. <laughs> patreon.com forward slash queers um, yes. if of course money's a bit tight for you there's other ways that you can support us mm-hmm. um, by reviewing us if you've got like Apple Podcasts and you can leave a little review it only takes yeah. a couple of seconds um, subscribing sharing telling a friend telling tell an enemy. enemy tell Cord Overstreet <laughs> <laughs>
you've been sitting on that for a while, haven't you? <laughs> Oh, I love the this is the dumbest name I've ever heard. He's quite fit though, so we'll let it go. Which one's he? He's Sam with the big mouth, the blonde one. Ah, oh, stupid mm. name. He's got abs. He was Rocky in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. I mean, it doesn't make up for Cordover Street. <laughs> Um, if you'd like to keep up to date with everything that we're doing, um, if you'd like to see my little shrine to Cordover Street, um, you can follow us <laughs> on the social medias at Queers Gone By. Um, I'm at Kate Butch One on all of them. And I'm at Kate Mel Powell on Instagram and at Caitlin PWLL on Twitter. And um, this is just the beginning of December. We've got even more festive so cheer. Much Christmas content! Christmas! <laughs> um, I hope you're having a safe festive period. Yes. As they very much were. Mm-hmm. Um, go and go and listen to the Mame soundtrack. I will be. Have some eggnog. Ooh. Or flaxseed <laughs> nog. Sure. For the vegans out there. Yes. <laughs> and we shall see you next week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Katie Lang was in this.